Hello, all my truth seekers. Yes, you wanted to know the truth. Well, if you don't know me, I'm Keisha and I'm here to make that video for you. I'm going to be talking about the strange chemtrails. Are they used in some places to make crime and chaos, among other things, happen? Or is it just a plain smoke? I don't know. Let's talk about it. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Some ideas about contrails say that these long straight clouds, which are probably made with planes fly at high altitudes, are often actually chemical weapons being used against people. Anthropogenic clouds have been around for a long time. They were first seen above factories at the start of the Industrial Revolution and are still common today. But contrails, which are made by the exhaust from plane engines, usually jet engines, are by far the most common man-made clouds. These clouds happen when water vapor from engine exhaust mixes with condensation of nuclei in the exhaust and the very cold air to form trails of visible moisture clouds that turn into small ice crystals. Contrails aren't the only kind of man-made clouds that come from airplanes. When the angle of attack is high, air coming off flaps or wingtips can also form small clouds that don't last long. Here's the theory that chemical warfare is very sadly not a new phenomenon, believe it or not. It has been used in various forms of thousands of years. For example, poison tip arrows are form of chemical weapon. Yeah, you know, the poison tip arrows, yes. The use of such weapons arguably reached its peak during World War I, when countries on both sides of the trenches used chemical weapons, including chlorine gas and mustard gas, resulting in more than a million casualties, many of them civilians and in Germany during World War II, where the Nazi used poison gas to kill millions and millions of Caucasian Jews because he felt that they weren't the real original biblical Jews. He called them fake Jews. That's what he kept saying in his speeches, if you translate that. False Juden, fake Jews. Anyway, he said they were fake. That's what he was saying. Yeah. Anyway, in more recent times, the Syrian army has been accused of using chemical warfare against the rebel-held civilian population centers. And these are only a small handful of many instances in which people have used chemical weapons against others. With that as a baseline, it is really unbelievable that the government could use chemical weapons against its own populace and influence behavior, manage the population, or cause drought or flooding to occur. Hmm, let's think about that. You see, supporters of chemtrails agree that the condensation trails do exist. Still, they say that chemtrails are different because the chemicals they are made of make them last longer than regular contrails, which they say disappear more quickly. They say that these man-made clouds that last longer are proof that chemtrails are real. Oh, yes. Now. Proponents of the chemtrail theory have used photos and videos to support their claims. Among these were many barrels with plumbing installed in the space where people normally sit on bigger planes. Yes, in addition, they have used video of planes spraying something over a city as proof that chemtrails are used. Take a look at these clips. Dick Gregory uh, really moved me and a lot of my friends what he said this phenomena of chemtrails and you know 
when I was a kid, I used to see these trails in the sky all the time. And so oh, that's cool. A jet just went over. And then you started to see a whole bunch of them. And the next thing you know, everybody in your neighborhood was fighting and arguing and you didn't know why. Okay, and, and you really didn't know why. I mean, everybody was fighting. So he, he started riffing about the chemtrails. And he started to say things that uh, hit home so hard. And I would recommend that everybody try to get what he said online or wherever. The queen, the queen just turned 90. It was a big celebration. And coincidentally, it was the same day the prince passed away. And it was the same day she was here in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Front page of the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. Got her and her family dressed in purple. <laughs> the same day they, they killed Prince. Now there's such a thing as persistent contrails. One, air's got to be cold. And secondly, the air has to be extremely humid so that the moisture doesn't evaporate into the air and so it lingers. Now chemtrails are totally different because these occur in warm and dry air. But these chemtrails are loaded with chemicals. They're loaded with heavy metals. We know that there's a lot of aluminum and a lot of barium and a lot of strontium. Michael, how would you distinguish chemtrails? Uh, we see complete cloud cover, and um, a lot of people experience adverse health effects, uh, burning eyes, shortness of breath. We know that barium causes high blood pressure, lowers our immune system, and what's amazing during these days, any emergency room doctor who is aware of the aerosol spray and will tell you during heavy spray days, emergency rooms are packed. We do know that the military is releasing aluminum coated fiberglass by the ton. It's a particulate that floats in the air for up to 20 hours and can have an impact on public health. Ain't nothing but CIA. Hearts, what a beautiful sky, eh? What a beautiful place. Take a look. Today I'm going to talk about chemtrails, okay? I'm going to tell you something right now. I used to live in Kelowna, British Columbia, and by 11 o'clock every day there was no sky left. I'm not making this up, okay? That's how much they dumped chemtrails into the sky every day. They wanted to ruin the jewel of Canada. So anyways, I live in Escapa, Mexico right now, and I have never seen a chemtrail. I am not lying to you, I've never seen a chemtrail. They don't want to poison the poor, do they? No. And understand something, chemtrails are aluminum and small micro pieces of plastic. And understand something, like they have been trying to poison us with plastic? My God, the ocean is full of plastic. And guess what, did you know this? That you'll find the soil, okay, can be 50 times greater than the normal amount for health of aluminum in a lot of areas around the world right now. And so our soil is full of aluminum and plastic and you're gonna find that in the vegetables and the fruit particles and the rest of the foods that you eat. So you better wake up. You better wake up to structured water. You better wake up to advanced water fasting. You better wake up to daily cleansing tea. You better wake up to the ultimate coffee enema, you better wake up to black diamond and black. 
As we know, the theory of chemtrails is that they're spraying chemicals in certain areas for the people in that area to become sick, violent, delusional, and in most cases, lose memories. But you know me, I have to break it down into four sections at least. Yes, these four sections slash theories. I'm going to start with population control. Population control. Some believe that spraying chemicals is intended to reduce the world's population by causing illness or fertility in that area. Yes. Two, geoengineering. Proponents of this theory suggest that the chemtrails are being used to manipulate the Earth's climate or weather patterns, possibly for military or government purposes. Yes. Three, mind control. Another belief is that the chemtrails are designed to manipulate human behavior or control populations, thoughts, and actions. Oh, yes. Fourth, yeah, environmental impact. Some claim that chemtrails are causing environmental damage, such as contributing to climate change or harming ecosystems. Oh, yes. However, it's important to know that the overwhelming scientific consensus is that chemtrails are not real. The trails observed behind the aircraft are simply condensation trails formed when hot engine exhaust momentarily condenses into water droplets in the cold air at high altitudes. It seems that numerous scientific studies have debunked the claims associated with the chemtrails conspiracy theory. But who would admit this atrocity theory? I mean, they would come up with scientific fact for space, uh, floods, tsunamis, random wars, just things that we just know better. So I say follow your gut feeling and do your own research. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post my videos. See you all later. Love you all. Bye.